All right, welcome back. And today what I want to do is I want to go through and test a couple of different keyboards that you guys suggested that I should try. And also a few random ones that I've found as well. And then I'm going to go through my opinions on what I like about them, what I don't like about them. And the goal of this video is for me to share what I would look for in a programming keyboard. So there will be some timestamps here, as you can see, for the different times when I'll try the different keyboards in case you want to skip ahead to any of that. There will also be timestamps to the other sections of this video. I really don't mind if you skip ahead, feel free to do so. And uh, also before we start, I wanna just spoil the video by saying straight away which keyboard I'm using, just so that you know that if that's all that you came here for. The Ducky 12 SF is the one that I'm using. And I that's the favorite one that I have. I used to use the Ducky 12 Mini, but I felt like I needed arrow keys. So that's why I went with the Ducky 12 SF. So now let's get into the actual tests. All right, so the way that we're gonna do the typing tests is I'm basically just gonna say what keyboard I'll be testing and then I'll show a short little test, a typing test on it and also the sound of the actual typing. So you can see kind of what it sounds like and how I'm typing on it. And then after that, I'll go through to the next one and then I'll just go through all of them. And then at the, at the end of it, I'll go through the three main ones that I kind of liked or was surprised by. So the first one is the Ducky 12 SF, which is the one that I'm actually using and I'm using it with Cherry MX brown switches. The second one is the Keychron K2 with Gatoron blue switches. And the third one is the Apple Magic keyboard. And now we get to what I would say is like the control group or like the random keyboards that I found that I wanted to also chuck in here just as a comparison, I don't know. The fourth one here is the Mission Serious Gaming, I think it's called. It's just a random one that I found. It's also one that looks, it has the same form factor as the one from the Mr. Robot TV series, which is my latest obsession if you haven't noticed. And so I kind of felt like it was fun to kind of chuck that in here as well. So that's the next one, the Mission Series Gaming. It's not a mechanical keyboard. I don't know what kind of keys it has, but that's the next one. And on the topic of useful tools for your software developer career, this video is sponsored by Grammarly. You nailed that transition, Cal. Good job. Grammarly is a digital writing assistant that caters to all types of individuals, whether you're trying to sound professional in an important email or drafting up a critical report for school or work. The free version provides basic spelling and grammar suggestions. And if you upgrade to Grammarly Premium, you get access to a lot of really unique features. For example, vocabulary suggestions, sentence structure corrections, and the most useful one and my personal favorite are the conciseness suggestions, as I tend to ramble on sometimes. Grammarly Premium is also really helpful if you're doing freelance work as a software developer, as you have to communicate back and forth with your clients and miscommunications can occur, especially with answering complex topics or questions. With the clarity suggestions, you're able to keep your sentences concise and clear. So I highly recommend that you check out Grammarly Premium. Go to grammarly.com slash cal and sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium. All right, then the fifth one is a Rapu Wireless Ultra Slim. Not sure what it is, it's just a random one. It's pretty cheap, I think. I think it's like about 20 bucks or something, not sure. And here it is. And now I also wanted to add in some actual laptops just to have that as a comparison. So I think one really interesting one is the MacBook Pro 2018 model because that has the kind of the butterfly switches that no one really liked. So uh, that's the next one. And now the last one is the new one that I just got, which is the Dell XPS 15 2020 version.
All right, so those are the tests for the different keyboards. And what I found was like the Apple Magic Keyboard. I was surprised by how much I actually liked that one. I remember using that like ages ago and I really did like it when I used it. It was one of my favorite keyboards when I, when I was using it. But then I switched over to the Ducky series of keyboards and since then I haven't really gone back. So I haven't tested it again. So I was surprised by how much I actually liked the Apple Magic Keyboard and also how fast I was able to type on it. I don't know how fast I was able to type on it in the actual test, but I tested it out a little bit more after that just to kind of make sure how I felt about the different keyboards. And I did really like it and I was able to type pretty fast on it. And then the Keychron K2, I really liked that one as well. It's very similar to the Ducky One 2SF I'm used to using. So uh, there wasn't a huge difference. The only thing that I did notice was that the keycaps, the size where you actually press the keycaps is like slightly smaller. The space there is slightly smaller. So I felt like that was doing something to my typing speed. Like I was kind of struggling a little bit more to actually hit the different keys. And then the third one is the Ducky 12SF, which is the one that I've been using. So that's of course the one that I like the most. And uh, I actually was surprised by the Mission Series gaming keyboard. Uh, it's again, it was a really cheap one, but I was able to type pretty fast on it and I really liked the way that I typed on it. So I think if I would go for like a full size keyboard that wasn't mechanical, that was kind of more silent, then I would probably go for that one actually, especially if I'm not using a Mac. If I'm using a Mac, I would go with the Apple Magic Keyboard, but if I'm not using a Mac, then I would go with the Mission Series Gaming. I'll leave links to all of these in the description. It will be like Amazon affiliate. So if you buy one from one of those links, it will give me some small commission, I think you call it. It will support the channel a little bit. So if you wanna buy one of these, there'll be a link in the description to them. All right, so now I wanna dig a little bit more deeply into the specifics of dif the different keyboards, like what size should you choose? and also mechanical versus non-mechanical keyboard. And the first one is size. So the ones that I've showcased now is the 65% and to the full size keyboards. Unless you're like one of those people that really loves using a numpad, I would skip the numpad. You don't really need it for programming. And to me, it kind of feels like when I'm typing, if I have to switch to the numpad, it kind of feels like having to switch to the mouse which is kind of like context switching, if that makes sense. I tend to want to stay on the keyboard as much as possible when I'm programming. So for me, a numpad is not really something that I use. I'm not used to using it either, but I would suggest looking into a 65% keyboard. That's like the generic, like general purpose keyboard that you would use. Because with that, with the 65%, you get the arrow keys, which is really important for most people, I would say. That's one of the reasons why I went with 65 instead of 60. And then we have the 60% and also the Keychron K2. The Keychron K2 has the dedicated function keys and that's like the major differentiating factor for that one. And that's one of those things that again is kind of personal preference. So I know that some people will be really used to using dedicated function keys. So for that person, I would definitely go with the Keychron K2, but if you don't really care about fun function keys, which I don't personally, then I would go with something like a 65 or 60% keyboard. And if you're a person that uses like something like Vim, which is a text editor that's really like terminal based and is really kind of unique in the way that you use it, then I would say that you should probably look into trying a 60% keyboard because then you don't really need arrow keys. So that's why I would say a 60% keyboard could be something for someone that uses Vim a lot. But I know that most people probably don't use Vim. So I would say again that 65% is probably the more useful uh, size of a keyboard for most people. All right, the next one is mechanical versus non-mechanical keyboards. And here I would say that this is basically a question of loud and tactile versus quiet and non-tactile. So it's basically just a question of how loud can you stand, basically. So I think that like the Magic Keyboard is one of the quiet, most quiet keyboards that I've used that's still like really nice to use. So that's a really good one if you want something that's really quiet. But if you don't really mind having some sound, I personally prefer the Cherry MX Brown switches. So they're 
kind of an in-between of like, they're fairly, they're very tactile, but they still don't produce the same kind of loud, obnoxious sound as the Cherry MX Blues. Because I did used to use the Cherry MX Blues, but they, they're just obnoxious to anyone that's around. Basically, if you're sitting here typing, it'll be really like, it'll bother people if you're typing on a Cherry MX Blue uh, keyboard. So therefore, if you're gonna go with a mechanical keyboard, then I would suggest going with something like Cherry MX Brown switches or something equivalent, because they're kind of a neat compromise between being not too loud, but still quite tactile. And this is something that's super difficult to give any recommendations on. I recommend the Cherry MX Browns, but you might not like them. So I would suggest just try one switch out and then see what you think of it. And then maybe if you don't like it, go to another one and see what you think of that one. But for me, Cherry MX Browns is the perfect match. All right, and of all these keyboards that I've tried, my top two picks are the Keychron K2 and the Ducky 12 SF. And the reason that I want these two ones as my main recommendations is with both of those two, you have a wide spectrum kind of covered because you can use the Keychron K2 with a Mac. It comes with the command buttons and all that stuff. So it's kind of configurable to work on a Mac, which usually mechanical keyboards don't come with Mac OS configurations. So you kind of have to just live with the Windows key and just make that work anyway. The nice thing about the Keychron K2 is the fact that it comes with a command button. It, it comes with those kind of Mac OS uh, style buttons. And it also has the dedicated function row so that you have all those buttons for that in case you want to use it. And then in case you don't want something as big as this one, I would go with the Ducky 12 SF. All right, so to conclude the video, what I would recommend is getting a 65% keyboard if you're a programmer. And the reason for this is that you get the dedicated arrow keys, which can be nice if you're like jumping around the code in a text editor. You usually want to have some dedicated arrow keys. I actually started out with a 60% keyboard, which was the Ducky 12 Mini. And I used that for about six months and it worked fine. You know, you can still jump around with the arrow keys if you use the function button, but it was kind of a hassle and I found myself like missing the dedicated arrow keys. So I switched to the 65% version of the Ducky 1-2. I've really enjoyed using this and I haven't really found anything since switching to the 65% version that I miss. So therefore I think that most people will not miss anything from using a 65% keyboard. And if you want something bigger, I would go with the Kcron K2. All right, so those are my general recommendations for what to look for in a programming keyboard. Also, when it comes to programming, there's really nothing special that you need from your keyboard. You can get by with pretty much anything that you have. So there's no need to buy a new keyboard just because you're getting into programming. I just wanted to say that in case you're like thinking that you need something special, you need a numpad or you need function keys or something like that, you don't really need that at all. I've never used that when I've been programming. All right, so those are my general guidelines for what to look for in a programming keyboard. I hope that this gave you some valuable information of some kind in your search for the perfect keyboard. And uh, yeah. That's pretty much it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.